So what about the electronics part? Uh, it's actually probably the easiest part about this whole swap. I actually made this video after. Uh, I posted the, the conversion video maybe three months ago, and I've had a lot of emails about it. There's at least maybe five or six guys that have actively done their car, and I've gotten a couple uh, bits of new information that actually make it even easier. Um, you don't have to cut anything. You don't have to splice anything. You don't have to do really anything except for unplug something in and trip a jumper. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how it is. Now I will address the critics real quick. There's a lot of people that think that, oh, you're butchering your car when you do this. And I'm, I'm really hoping that this video shows you that you're not. Ferrari created these cars essentially as a manual transmission gated car and they added an F1 system where they were all extra components. All you're doing in this is just undoing the conversion that Ferrari did at the factory. You're converting it back to what it originally was. And a lot of people, in fact, the, the, the five people I referenced, every single one of them is doing this voluntarily. Their F1 system works perfect and they just simply want to go to an F1. And um, I, I'm hoping that by seeing a lot of this, you'll see that it's it's really not that intrusive. In fact, it's probably completely opposite of that. Anyway, what we're working on is here. So remember, we put in the shifter, and here is the harness that comes off of the reverse switch. So to hook up the reverse lights, you don't have to do any splicing or anything like that. You simply take this harness, which is already here. It is a harness from the car's reverse lights to the TCU. Okay, well, we're not using the TCU anymore, so we're just going to unplug that. All right, now that we've got it unplugged, we take it and we plug it into the reverse lights. Once this is plugged in, your reverse lights work perfectly. All right, so now we just turn it to the on position, put it in reverse, and ta-da, we got lights. So the next place we'll be working is down here in the foot well. So the, to start the car, the car needs a signal from the TCU to make sure it's in the right place to start or whatever. So there is a signal that trips a relay uh, when the ignition is on. So all we need to do is just install a jumper in this relay and now the car will start without the transmission computer. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, so right here you have the fuses for your transmission. This is the power unit. That's where they're big fuses. These are not in a gated car. Uh, so these go back to the pump, and uh, right now nothing's hooked up, so they don't really need to be there. Right here is a diode bridge relay for your starter. The wire right here comes from your TCU, and it simply trips this relay. What we're going to do is pull the relay out, and I've made this jumper. We're going to install that into pin 30 and 87, just like this. And all we're doing is now just telling the car, we're taking the TCU out of the loop. So it'll now start without the TCU signal. And that's it. Okay, and one more edit since hopefully I don't have to edit this video anymore. Uh, when I originally did this video, the whole plan was to have a car that I could go back and forth between an F1 and a six-speed. Like, if I wanted to do a track day and put the paddles in, I could do that. And um, the computer will throw a code, a P0600 code, which means a serial data bus uh, connection error. That means that when the TCU is unplugged or not working, the ECU can't talk to it. And so what it was doing is for the last couple of years, I would get this code like once every two hours. It was really weird how it didn't show up very much. Anyway, uh, the fix for that is to have your ECU reprogrammed. So if you're okay with, if you want to go back and forth, just leave it as it is. You'll get a check engine light every once in a while. If you want to get rid of the code, then you need to have your ECU reprogrammed to a manual car. And so I think people with HP tuners can do that. There might be other people. I sent mine to ECU Specialized Repair in Florida, and they had it back in two days, and there's no code. I've been driving it now for, uh, I don't know, two or three months and not getting any code. So that has one more bit of information that you need to decide. If, if, if you ever wanna go back, if you have it reprogrammed, now you're gonna have to send it back to get it reprogrammed. So that's the only thing. Otherwise, you can buy a second ECU, but obviously uh, that's not very cost effective. But right now, I, I tried the F1 and I'm happy with it as a gated car, so I'm just gonna leave it as a gated car and so that's why I got my ECU reprogrammed.